football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer, and we're going to continue our How Can These Teams Win the National Championship feature. We're on to Michigan. We're on to the number two seed. I've done the other two. If you want to watch those, uh, go back. Already done Ohio State and TCU. So now we're on to Michigan. How does Michigan win a national championship? How does it happen? So they start with TCU, of course, and I think in that TCU matchup, it's going to be very important for Michigan to just be who they've been all year long. You know, TCU has not been great against the run whatsoever, and especially recently, And if you look at Michigan, it seems like they're just peaking with this run game. It's been so fun to watch, and that's without Blake Corum for a lot of this stretch, but in their last seven games, they've ran for 225 yards in all but one of those games. That's crazy. That also includes a 400-yard rushing performance against Penn State. So <clears throat> my point of this is, that's where they hold the advantage up front. TCU's number 66 in run defense, and it's been worse than that over the last six weeks for TCU. I simply don't see any way that TCU's going to be able to keep Michigan from getting well over 200 yards rushing. The question is, is it an avalanche or is it just this steady diet? So what I mean by that is, is Michigan going for 205 yards and averaging you know 4.1 yards per carry? Or is Michigan going for like 270 yards and 6.6 yards per carry? Two totally different things. And that's going to be key. But if you watch Michigan all year, I think it's one of those things where you can be pretty confident that they will continue to run the football. They will continue to try to wear you down, continue to try to exploit you up front, and then take shots deep when they have the chance. I think that's going to be key, that they stay true to who they are, especially in the first round. You know, beyond that, if they play Georgia, things will be a little different. If they play Ohio State, though, it's going to be very similar to this matchup against TCU, two explosive offenses that they can bully up front, or at least have opportunities to bully up front. So that's kind of that first round, but also in that first round, I think it's very important that we also kind of key in on J.J. McCarthy. Because in my eyes, he's going to have to play well for them to win a national championship. And he's had moments, right? The last two games, I've been very impressed by him. I think he's taken steps in the right direction. They've had explosive plays in the passing game, which is something they didn't have early in the season. It became very evident that they would need that. And against Ohio State, I think it became very evident that if they didn't have that, that game would have been a lot closer. But the fact of the matter is, they did have it. They were creating all those 45-plus yard touchdowns, and so things just started to snowball. And they continued to perform at a very high level, take shots deep, get their running backs involved, and of course, get their receivers more involved in the game plan. I think that the key, though, for him is the accuracy part. And so, for me, when I'm watching, like against Ohio State, for instance, he was 12 of 24. That's not great, 50%. Now, the thing they did do well is on his completions, they were averaging 22 yards per completion. So when he did complete the pass, it worked out really, really well for them. But the issue is that 12 for 24. You know, when you play against a team like TCU, and TCU's probably going to be putting a lot of guys in the box, they're going to be trying to get physical with their receivers on the outside, if you're 12 of 24 and let's say you only throw for 160 yards, you might have issues unless you just have this crazy day running the football. But I do think that 50% mark is not good enough. And four of his last five games, he's completed less than 53% of his passes. Again, it might not show up in the win-loss column right now, but when you play a team like TCU who's going to get physical on the outside, it could become an issue if it becomes more of a shootout. Or in the national championship, if you're playing Georgia and it's third and four and you need a completion and you're just slightly off, that can be the difference between a win and a loss. I'd like to see him closer to that 64% range. I don't know if that's attainable, but in my eyes, what I've seen from him, I think it is. If he can get there, that's going to give them a great shot to win a national championship, in my opinion, because I think in both of those rounds, he needs to be the most consistent quarterback. Doesn't have to be the best, but he's got to be the most consistent. Whether that consistency is being extremely accurate or being extremely consistent on deep balls, he's got to be one of those two, in my eyes, for them to be the national championship team that they want to be. Uh, defensively, I'm not too worried about them. Um, 
They've been very good all year. They have a top five defense. They've been getting after the quarterback at a pretty high level. Number 26 in the country, pass rushing. TCU hasn't faced a defense that gets after the quarterback like that. Um, and this isn't some extraordinary Michigan pass rush like it was a year ago, but still very good and very capable of making you uncomfortable in the pocket. And again, that would be key if they were able to do that. Um, that top 5D, again, will try to take away the run game against TCU, which if they do, I think they'll have a great shot at winning that game. And then the national championship, if you take away either of those teams' run games, again, that gives you a very nice opportunity to win a national championship. So looking at Georgia specifically, because I think TCU and Ohio State, it's, it's similar conundrums for Michigan. You know, don't give up the big plays, run the football effectively, um, try to wear the other defense down when up front. Against Georgia, it's a little different um, because Georgia has the same ability as Michigan where they can wear you down up front. They can match you physically uh, up front with their defensive and offensive lines. And because of that, it comes down to the little things. And that's why I talked about the accuracy with J.J. McCarthy, but it's also the red zone and the third down. These are two areas that Georgia is elite at. They score touchdowns in the red zone. They get stops in the red zone. They get stops on third down, and they convert on third down at a very high rate. Michigan is 30th in red zone defense and 30 and 20th in third down defense. Very good, but not elite to the level of Georgia. That needs to be fixed. They cannot go in and play a team like Georgia and kick field goals the whole game. They can't go in and beat a team like Georgia and give up touchdowns in the red zone consistently. They got to find ways to get off the field as a defense. And that's going to be very key. We saw against Purdue in the Big Ten Championship, they forced a lot of field goals. And that pretty much won them that game. I know the final score looks really bad, but if you watch that game, if Purdue wasn't kicking field goals and they were scoring touchdowns, that game could have totally been different. But the Michigan defense was stepping up when it needed to. It's going to have to do more of that against Georgia, because like I said, Georgia's going to do some of that against this Michigan team. So in general for Michigan, you know, running the football, you know, sticking to that with Donovan Edwards, even without Blake Corum, you got to feed the run game. That's what's really been thriving for them. Put J.J. McCarthy in situations to be successful, whether that's being accurate and getting first downs consistently or converting on deep shots downfield. And then just making those slight adjustments to get even better when you're talking about the red zone and third downs. If they can do those things, I think Michigan's got a great shot. And for me, just kind of my mindset on this, I think Michigan is probably the most sure thing to make the national championship game. And then once you get there, you just lay all your chips on the table. And I, I do think this Michigan team is capable of winning a national championship this year. They're playing at a very high level. And if they continue that, keep that momentum going into the postseason, they're going to be a very, very tough out and a team that I think a lot of people will probably get behind uh, as the college football playoffs continue to move on. So that's it for Michigan. I'm going to talk about Georgia as the last episode of the week. Um, but that's it for today. Thanks for listening to Crystal Ball College Football.